The best way to explain the book was by reading the first page. Now, the author did some great things, and since this is just the first page, I really liked it. It has been 64 years since the president and the consortium identified Lyme as a disease, and 43 since the scientists perfected the cure. Everyone else in my family has had the procedure already. My oldest sister, Rachel, has been disease-free for nine years now. She's been safe from love for so long, she, can't, she says she can't even remember its symptoms. I am scheduled to have my procedure in exactly 95 days on September 3rd, my birthday. Many people are afraid of the procedure, some people even resist. But I'm not afraid, I can't wait. I would have done it tomorrow if I could, but you have to be at least 18, sometimes a little older, before the scientists will cure you. Otherwise, the procedure won't work correctly. People end up with brain damage, blindness, or worse. I don't like to think about it still walking around with the disease running through my blood. Sometimes I swear I can feel it breathing in my veins like something spoiled, like sound it, it makes me feel dirty. It reminds me of children throwing tampons. It reminds me of resistance. The disease girls driving their nails on paint, tearing out their hair, the mouths drift in spit. And of course, it reminds me of my mother. <coughs> After the procedure, I will be happy and safe forever. That's what everybody says scientists and my sister and Aunt Carol. I will have the procedure and then I'll be paired with the board that evaluators choose me. In a few years we'll get married. Recently I started having dreams about my wedding. In them I'm standing under a white canopy with flowers in my hair. I'm holding hands with someone but whenever I turn to look at him his face blurs like a camera losing focus and, and I can't make out any features. But his hands are cool and dry and my heart is beating steadily in my chest. And in my dream, I know I will always, it will always be out that same rhythm. Not skip or jump or swirl or go faster. Just bump, bump, bump until I'm dead. Safe and free from pain. So what did you guys get from that? Like, what's the government well, doing? Her journey is so spectacular in the book because You're she experiences what? love while the government uh, outlaws love, has a cure for love. I mean, and love isn't just like what we think of love between a couple, but between a mother and a daughter, a father and a son, a mother and a sister when they're not fighting. So, what do you think Lena goes through as she experiences love? Because, I mean, we all know it's not something you just feel one day and not the next. Katie? Um, she has to change her thoughts between thinking that love is this horrible disease to something that's good. She has to like fight through loving someone and then thinking it's bad. So really, the main idea during the book is the government has proclaimed love is a disease and they have a cure. So it's really a different way of seeing it. And then Lane is going through it all. Next slide. And then you have the characters, Lena, the main character, the narrator, who's going through all this. And then you have, <clears throat> then you have Alex, the boy Lena meets, who becomes her love interest. Now, with what I explained to you, that doesn't really work out, but you need to read more to find out. And then you have Hannah, her best friend. And even though they come from different circumstances and kind of walks of life, like Hannah doesn't need Lena as much as Lena needs Hannah. If you get and then you have Aunt Carol, who's basically her caretaker when her mother leaves her. Because, in a way, her mother left her behind with this past that she doesn't quite understand why she did it. And then, to, to Lena, Aunt Carol represents a disease-free life, a love-free life. Because she's the face, not no disease in her words. It's said in a futuristic Portland, Oregon, but outside of Portland, Oregon, it's called the now, the wilds aren't controlled by the government. It's only a fence around Portland. And there are two perspectives in the book. One, the fence keeps everything out that you don't want. But two, it keeps everything in. And like as we talked before, Lena's journey, love changes her perspective as something from outlawed to something she'd rather have for a million years than ever go without it. And then her loyalty side, I mean, where her loyalty side changed. 
because the government wants her to do one thing, and she finds herself doing that. To me, the central thing throughout the book is that love is a thing that, through any hardship or sacrifice, you will do that for them, or for everyone. Love. <laughs> Central problems going against the government and its rules because they outlaw love and her inner journey as she goes through the book. To me, this book left me feeling more inspired to appreciate those I love, like my mother, my family, my sister, even when I fight with her. And it compares to places like ours where love is a part of every day. I mean, we go home, we see our mom and dad and say, Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> But here, it's kind of, in her world, it's more foreign to her. I mean, she doesn't even look at a boy when we were in high school. And then, recommendation. I would say seventh grade up, since it's really better if you can make these connections and look through the text to what the big picture is about. And it's really for those who like realistic characters because, I mean, it's average, an average person going through not so obvious things. And the main ideas were relatable and it's a book outside your comfort zone, like this idea. Because, I mean, she mashed Lauren Oliver, the author, mashed together the ideas of disease and love. We think of them as entirely different things. Any questions? Joseph? You said they, that she was going to get the cure for love, whatever, at 18. Do you have? Do they have to get it then, or do, like is it like online where they you get, uh, get no, someone I mean, signs it? You know? With scientific things like that, there are always exceptions, but typically it's 18. Katie, um, you said that um, the main character mentioned that sometimes people resist to it, mm -hmm. but do they still the government force them to get it? Yes, like also I read and page one and page two, how diseased girls drag their nails on the pavement, tearing out their hair, their nails spit. Yeah. So it's kind of serious. I mean, they've experienced love, and they know it's better than what we know as now. Um, when you're reading the first page, is there something about uh, when I'll be happy when I die? Um, it's more like she'll, she'll go through her life knowing that she'll be safe from the disease be safe from love. She'll know that her heart won't beat or skip when she sees someone she likes or stuff like that. That's my book talk.